different? Uh, it's an interesting question. I always thought I was different. No one said that life was going to be easy, but we kind of have to make the best of the hand we've been dealt. Hi, I'm Benjamin Cohen. I first began the process of coming out when I was 15. For a few years, I wondered if the feelings I had would go away and maybe whether they were a test from God. I think I first realised that um, I wasn't attracted to girls when I was about 11 or 12 years old. Um, I knew I kind of felt different, but I knew that I, I could be happy with who I was, but it just took me quite a bit of time to, to realise that. I think I first realised that I fancied boys when I was about 10 or 11. And I didn't know though what the word gay meant. I remember I just started secondary school and I remember coming home and asking my dad, what does gay mean? Because the other kids kept saying things like, you're so gay, that's so gay, you're so gay. So he said to me, well, gay means that you love another boy. The way I found out was I fell in love with somebody and I wasn't sure what was going on. And a friend of mine said, well, you're in love with her. And I said, uh, I'm not like that. Oh my God, I am. And suddenly the whole world changed and an awful lot of things started to make sense where they hadn't made sense before. So back when I came out, we were living in a totally different world. Section 28 meant homosexuality wasn't really discussed in schools and there wasn't an equal age of consent. There were no civil partnerships and really no prospect of same-sex marriage, something our Prime Minister now wants to introduce. But I realised despite the advances in equality, coming out is still difficult, especially if, like me, you come from a faith background. So obviously I knew at a relatively young age that I wasn't quite with the program. I knew that I kind of wasn't going to get married to a girl. It wasn't something I wanted and it became abundantly clear to me when I actually realised I was gay. So I tried to fight it and tried to date women and of course it was a complete disaster. And then a few years later I did get the professional help that I needed and within a few months uh, the closet became uh, sawdust and I was completely out. Coming out means revealing something about yourself and being honest maybe for the first time about a very important part of your identity with the people who care about you the most. I think it's as confusing being um, young and queer or LGBT um, anywhere. I think being at a school in which it wasn't spoken about made it slightly more difficult because it took that little bit more time to, to find a community in other places because at the time there were two other people out in my year and when I was beginning to realise that I just had no one to talk to who could really understand or relate to what I was going on about. Well, my parents uh, were very liberal in principle. It's always a little bit different, you think, when it becomes personal. And I was most worried about my father because he was a rabbi. And I remember he came to see me in Jerusalem and we went for a walk along the railroad tracks. And he said to me he had a certain picture of how my life was going to be and this piece of information meant that he would have to change the picture. But I eventually spoke to a few of my friends and they were incredible. And I think I was really lucky that in my school, even though it's an orthodox school, there was a huge variety of different types of Judaism um, being practiced by the people. So there was reform and liberal and Mazorsi. And so a lot of my friends were, even the orthodox friends, were really actually really supportive and really incredible with accepting me for whoever I was. I can honestly say from all my Jewish gay friends, you know, the majority of them, their families do know, and no one's been rejected. I've, ne I've not actually heard of anyone that's been rejected. So... We were on holiday in Grand Canaria, sitting around the pool, and I started speaking to my mum, and I knew that no one else could hear. And I said to her, Mum, I've got something to tell you. Will you love me no matter what? And she's like, of course I love you no matter what. What have you done? Have you stolen something? She went through a whole list of things that I could have done, including, like, for some reason, wetting the bed. And then she finally said, are you trying to say you're gay? So I said, yeah, I think I am. Well, at least I fancy men, and I don't think it's going to stop. Um, and she said, well, look, of course I don't matter what. The only thing that made him sad was that my life would be much more difficult now, and he worried about the people out in the world who might try and hurt me. But as far as I was, me and his daughter, nothing, nothing had changed. I came out to my friends when I was probably around 13, 14 and then I told my parents when I was 16. This was, um, this was quite a hard time for me but I knew that it was something that I had to do and I, was felt, I felt much calmer and much more at ease once I'd done that. They were fabulous about it. 
and always have been and have always provided me with love and respect regardless of who or what I am. And then I decided to come out to my parents and I wrote them a letter uh, saying that I was gay, telling them a little about my experiences and of course especially my mother reaction was, uh, was it's no problem, we love you the way you are uh, and definitely she became a big supporter, she went to the Pride in Israel with me that if she found out she has another gay son and she dealt with that as well. I waited for a night that no one else would be at home and I made some arrangements to see that and um, I said to him, look, I was going to tell you I'm gay and he's like, I'm not an idiot and let me guess, your boyfriend is Adam who you seem to always be hanging around with. So I was like, yes. Um, and he was fine with it and has been really, really supportive and become a real big advocate for LGBT rights across everything he does at work and also the stuff he does in the community. I think what, what I forgot at the time was I was so busy coming out and wanting everyone to accept me that I didn't realise that my parents also in a way had to come out. They had to adjust to things being different to how they thought they were or how they wanted them to be and I needed to give them that time. And once they'd had that time, they were okay. Coming from traditional Jewish families, we were naturally anxious about meeting our respective parents. However, this was completely misplaced and we found our families to both be very welcoming of one another and in fact my parents' biggest concern was if it actually would have a long-term uh, future as David is so keen uh, into football. Unfortunately, some young people are still being told that homosexuality is a choice, not something you can't help. In some religious institutions, young people are being told about so-called reparative therapy for same-sex attraction. In other words, courses and treatments to turn you straight. I know people who've spent tens of thousands of pounds trying to unsuccessfully alter their sexuality, and other people have unfortunately harmed themselves after failing. On both sides of the Atlantic, medical associations condemn the practice. In the progressive movement, I'm a liberal rabbi. Uh, these days, it's, I, I can't see any place where it's particularly an issue. Probably you'll wonder, and as I did when I first sort of was thinking about this to myself, that am I going to be letting people down? Are they going to think any worse of me? And in a Jewish context, you think, well, I'm also kind of doing a sin if, I, if I'm with a guy. You know, there's, most of you will know there's 613 mitzvot in the Torah, and it's impossible for, for all of us to keep all of them. It's physically impossible. Um, but I think we all need to make sure that we're, we're good people and uh, contribute to the world in the best way that we can. I think the first time that I realised you could actually be actively gay and Jewish was when I went to Queer Shabbaton in Amsterdam. Um, I met with people from all over the world who identified as Jewish and lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender. There were lots of different seminars running, pretty similar to Limud, but with a very much a, a queer focus. Um, and I really felt that people could get on with their lives and uh, embrace both facets of their identity. One of the things actually that I'm very proud of my late father is that uh, when the first out uh, people applied to the rabbinical school to Leo Bear College to become students and eventually become rabbis, uh, he was uh, their advocate. And at the time I believe there was somebody who was closeted and somebody who was out and the uh, school said they would take the closeted person but not the out person. And my father argued that uh, you take either both of them or neither of them and in his opinion you should take both and they took both and uh, since that time uh, they were the shoulders on whom I'm standing and I hope in every generation it gets a little bit easier. It's still difficult but it's not as difficult as in previous times. I feel twice blessed that I was born into both the Jewish and the LGBT community and in part it's because I've discovered that there are tens of thousands of other people like me. In Britain, we have Kesha UK, the National LGBT Jewish Forum, and groups including Gay Jews in London, JGLG, Engage, the Gay and Lesbian Orthodox Network, and Imaot Ba'avot, the group for LGBT parents. There's really so much on offer to allow people who identify as Jewish and LGBT to live happy lives. And what I really want you to know from me and uh, from everybody that I know and work with, particularly at Kesha UK, is that you're not alone. There are people out here who love you and care about you and want to help 
and support you in any of the decisions that uh, you need to make. That people surprise you and that sometimes the fear around you is actually not as great or as scary as it may seem. You should follow your gut and know that who you are is incredible and wonderful and you're the exact same person you were a minute before you told someone and the exact same person a minute after. Being gay is part of who you are. Um, you can't change it and you should really embrace it, just like embracing being Jewish. When it comes to God, I can assure you that God looks upon you the same as everybody else, as a creation to be treated with love and with respect. And so my advice is that take courage in yourself, like take, be really, really brave um, and be honest about who you are to the people that are important in your life. And really frankly, if people can't accept you for who you are, for the person that God made you, then they really don't deserve to be part of your life. And I think that over time, anyone who is close to you and anyone who really loves you will understand that it's not your choice. It's not something you can help. And they will come to terms with it. And it will get better. A very good friend of mine once said, love me for who I am, not the person you want me to be. And I think that as soon as you realise this, you'll see that it gets better. It does get better. It gets better. It does get better. Well, it gets better. Not only does it get better, it gets fabulous. It does, does get, get better. better. Yeah, it does get better. So, don't worry. Hang in there. And I'm here to tell you that it's going to get better.